Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to get the game GTA Online working on an Apple Silicon Mac. So if you've got an M1, M2, M3 or M4, then this is going to be the tutorial for you. So you might know that GTA Online can't be run through something like Crossover, through a Wine translation layer, because the new update for Battle Eye Anti-Cheat makes it impossible to do so. However, there is a way to run this on a Mac using a virtual machine software called Parallels and the latest Windows 11 ARM Canary build, which has Battle Eye Anti-Cheat support. So today I'm going to be showing you how to go ahead and install this on your Apple Silicon Mac and actually get this working, I do recommend a machine with plenty of RAM, ideally more than 16 gigabytes or even more. That's because the virtual machine is going to use up quite a lot of resources. And of course, if you want to play the single player version of this game, you should be using Crossover instead. That's going to run this game far better and much better frame rates. However, this version of Parallels is pretty much the only way of getting GTA Online multiplayer working on a Mac. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So just a word of warning, we're going to be running these games on experimental versions of Windows 11 an arm and we'll be trying out games which were never designed to be run in a virtual machine. And although I wasn't banned in any of my testing, you should be warned that these games might possibly ban you for running this in a virtual machine like Parallels on a Mac and this really comes at your own risk. So the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and click the link at the top of the video description. Every single purchase that's made after clicking this link is going to help to support this channel and the content that I create. So once we click on the link and click go to site, so here we're going to be taken to the Parallels website and what we're going to do is click the buy now button and if we scroll down down here we'll be able to make a selection between the standard edition and the pro edition. So at the moment I recommend downloading the pro edition which unlocks additional features and if you're worried about price what you can do is to enter the coupon code AppleWiki10 and you can get a discount from there as well. However if you are interested in just trying this out for the very first time you can actually just go ahead and use the free trial. You can click the try free button and here we can make full use of a 14 day free trial here. Just enter your email address, agree to the terms and conditions and press the submit button. If you do decide to make a purchase eventually, remember to use my link in the description to help support this channel. So here we'll be taken to the Parallels trial screen here. I'm going to click on download Parallels desktop and that started the download process. So all we need to do now is to minimize and then we're going to go ahead and install Parallels. So click on finder here, click on downloads and then we're going to find the install Parallels desktop DMG. We're going to double click and then we're going to double click on install Parallels desktop. Click on the open button here and then click allow and then we're going to accept the end user licensing agreement. Click on enable and here we can choose whether we want to submit data, click enable or disable. And now it's downloading the Parallels software. So just wait for that to finish. Here it's now saying it's installing. And here we're going to enter our password. So just type that in. Here it's initializing. So here it's going to ask us to create a new virtual machine. And you can actually go ahead and download a multitude of different operating systems, including different versions of Mac OS, Ubuntu, Fedora Linux, Debian, Kali Linux, etc. However, today what we're going to be interested in is downloading and installing Windows 11 ARM. So in order to do this, all you have to do is to click Click this button here, get Windows 11 from Microsoft, and then press continue. Here it's saying download and install Windows 11. We're going to click install Windows here. So this is very easy to do. It's a one click process, far simpler than you doing this on VMware Fusion or on UTM. Parallels is going to handle the download and installation of Windows 11 ARM. No other steps are required. So here it's saying it's validating. So now what we can do is click try free for 14 days here. And we can go ahead and activate a free trial. So here it's saying the trial period ends after 14 days. Here we're going to click continue trial. So this is Windows 11 ARM operating within this little window here. And now this is going through the standard Windows setup. So no intervention is required on the user end. This is what you'd normally see if you were installing Windows 11 on bare metal. Now it's saying getting ready. Here it's saying just a moment. It's saying here the PC will restart, but it's just a virtual machine that's going to restart. Here it's restarting. And now we're booting into Windows 11. So here we're going to allow these permissions by clicking allow here and then allow here. And now it's saying the installation is complete. Click to continue. So here what we're going to do is to accept accept the Windows licensing agreement, press accept. And now it's saying here that Windows 11 has successfully installed. It is warning us that we need to activate our copy of Windows 11. I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later in this video. The first thing that you might want to do is to full screen this. So you can go ahead and click the green button here and it's going to full screen the virtual machine and it takes a few moments to resize. And what I'm going to do is right click on the wallpaper and then click on display settings. I'm just going to change the scaling. So I like this at 100%. So if you want to be able to put this back into a window, all you've got to do is on the keyboard, press control and option at the same time. And then you'll be able to toggle the ability to open up this menu bar at the top. And you can exit full screen and come back into this window. So just remember, 
control and option allows you to release your mouse from the virtual machine window. So another thing we want to do is to configure the virtual machine because we're on default settings at the moment. We can click on the start menu here and then shut down fully. And then once that has fully shut down, it's going to go into the control center here. And now we can configure it. So click on this cog icon and then click on CPU and memory. So this has automatically determined the number of CPU cores and the amount of RAM that's allocated to this virtual machine. But if we click on manual, then you could actually change this to something a bit more substantial. So for example, ideally you want half of the CPU cores allocated to the virtual machine. For example, I'm using the M3 Max with 16 CPU cores. So in that case, I would want to allocate eight CPU cores to the virtual machine. And ideally you want about half of the RAM as well. So I've got 40 gigabytes of RAM. So I'm going to put 20 gigabytes of RAM for the virtual machine. If you're using something like an M1, then you only have eight CPU cores. So you only want half of that, you have four CPU cores there. And then let's say you've only got eight gigabytes of RAM, you only want four allocated to the virtual machine. So make sure you play around with this. You should try and optimize this to take advantage of your machine as much as possible, especially considering that memory is also allocated to graphics memory as well. You want as much RAM as possible in order to get the best performance for gaming in particular. So first thing I'm going to do is talk about activation. I'll click on the start menu here. I'm going to type in the word activate, and then you can click on this to look at activation settings. And it says here that this is not active at the moment. You can go ahead and buy a product key if you want to. So I actually talk about whether you need to buy a product key in a different video. What I'm going to do is leave a link in the description for my video here. It basically talks about whether you actually need to buy a Windows 11 license in order to run a virtual machine on Parallels and what some of the cheaper alternatives might be. So make sure to check this one out. For the time being, I'm just going to be testing this out, so I won't be activating it. Next, we're going to be installing the Canary build of Windows 11 ARM so that we can access the anti-cheat updates and get BattleEye and other anti-cheat games working on the Mac. First thing we're going to do is to sign up to the Windows Insider program. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for this, but we can also just open up Edge and then do a search for Windows Insider program. And then this should be the first link up here. And uh, this is free to join. So all you need to do is to go ahead and uh, sign in to your Microsoft account. So if you don't have one already, just create a Microsoft account for free and then click the register button. And it says here, just sign in with a Microsoft account and then you can register with the Windows Insider program. If you don't have an account, you can always create one here. You can even get a new email address. So once we're registered, then it, so it says here verification is complete. And then we get to the page register for the Windows Insider program, accept, click register now. So it says here, welcome to the Windows Insider program flight now. So it means we're participating in the test. So it says here, getting started with the Insider program, we're going to preview Windows. So go ahead and click open settings here and we'll open the settings app on the Windows 11 ARM virtual machine. So here it's saying to join the Insider program, we need to turn on optional data. So we need to send optional data to Microsoft and then we're going to press get started here. And then we need to link the account that we just created. So I'm just going to link my account, which I just created or one that you've registered. And it's basically going to log into your account inside the entire virtual machine. So the entire virtual machine will be enrolled with this new email address. So now that we've registered, we're going to select our insider channel. So at the time recording, we want the Canary channel in order to get some of the benefits from the new anti-cheat programs. So here, just warning you that the Canary channel is very experimental. Here we're going to press continue and then we're going to review the agreements, press continue. And then it says here we need to restart. So I'm going to restart the device now. And then this is going to re-log us back into the Canary build. So this virtual machine is just uh, restarting now. And that's logging back in. I'm going to full screen this again. So now if we click on the start menu and then go to settings, then click on Windows Update and go to the Windows Insider program, just asking us to complete our details. So we're currently on the Canary channel, but we also need to update the virtual machine. So click Open Windows Update and check for updates. Here is now downloading the Windows 11 Insider Preview. Just let that finish and then go ahead and install and restart the virtual machine. So once that's now downloaded, we're going to press Restart now and it's going to install the Canary build. So here, yeah, updates are underway. Let that finish. So so now we've re logged in and saying here that the parallels tool need to be updated. We're just going to restart again. Saying here, reinstalling parallels tools for the new Canary build of Windows 11 ARM. So now it says here that we have this specific build. I can check this by going into the settings in the start menu. Go to Windows Update. And we click on the Windows Insider program. It says that we are on the latest Canary build here, 27718.1000. So this is the latest version. So I'm just going to go ahead and install Steam. So just do a search for Steam on Bing through the Edge browser. We're going to click Install Steam here and then Install Steam. And then on the Steam setup, we're going to open up File here, press Yes, and then go through the standard Windows installation of Steam. Press Next and then Finish. 
Hit saying it's updating. So now I'm going to log into our Steam account. And now the Steam library has opened up here. We're going to click on the library here. And then we're going to do a search for GTA 5. So if you haven't purchased this already, you can just go to the store and add this to your Steam library. And I'm going to press the install button here. And then we're going to install it in our C drive. So just press install. And then this is going to start the download process. So just go ahead and let that finish. So now once that's done and finished downloading and installed, we're going to press the play button. And here we have the option to play the single player GTA 5, but we're going to be testing out GTA Online with Battle Eye. So press play and then we're going to accept. And then this is installing some dependencies and then it's going to go ahead and launch GTA 5. Here we're going to say yes to the Rockstar Games launcher and you're just going to minimize this. And then we'll select the Rockstar Games launcher from here. We're going to continue, select our language, press continue, accept the licensing agreement and press continue. And then we're going to go ahead and install this into a virtual machine, press continue. And then it's installing Visual C++. That's a dependency, just let that finish. Now that we're done here, we're going to press close. You can see this is loading up, then connecting to Rockstar Game Services and then updating. Here we're going to say yes. And then it's installing another prerequisite. So now the Rockstar Games launcher window is opening up. And here we're going to be installing Battle Eye. So this is the Battle Eye launcher. We're going to be pressing install here. And then we're going to accept the end user licensing agreement of this and then press OK here. Here we're going to press yes. Here we're going to click allow. And now you can see that GTA 5 has logged in. So I'm going to press OK here. So you might run into a problem where the game won't actually log into GTA Online. If you have any issues logging in, what I recommend you do is to manually log into Rockstar Games Launcher first. So this installed when we tried to do the installation in the first place and then try to launch the game from here. And then what I'm going to do here is just change some settings first. So I'm going to just change the graphics settings. We'll put this into full screen. I'm going to run this at 1080p. And then I'm just going to turn the settings to what I normally turn it on to. Just put them onto normal settings. Then we're going to apply changes. Press enter. So I've allowed GTA 5 to restart. And now we're going to click on online. So here you can see I've logged into my GTA online account. So this is my character here in Los Santos. I'm actually able to play with a controller as well. I've got a pad on the Mac OS side and Parallels has just picked it up ready to play. And as you can see, the frame rate is OK. So there are some stutters and dips here and there. They're quite frequent. I'm pretty much running at 1080p on normal or low settings. The fact is that playing a game like this, which has been translated from x86 to ARM64 using Windows 11's Prism and then being virtualized in the full Windows 11 ARM desktop on an Apple Silicon Mac means that there's going to be a lot of resources being wasted trying to run this game on a Mac. Furthermore, we can only use up to half of our system RAM and half of our CPU cores. So considering all of the translation layers at work, it's quite good that we actually have a playable frame rate here even though we're running on basically the most expensive m3 max that you can buy at the moment i did have a play around with gta online you can do things like join up missions do the pvp gameplay it all seems to connect up and it does work it does take a while to load up a lot of games though just be aware of that and it's nowhere near as good as how gta online used to work on crossover however using the battle eye enabled version of windows 11 arm is going to be the only way to play this on an apple silicon mac so if you would prefer to run gta single player so that's the single player offline version of the game then I do recommend using crossover instead. I'll leave a link in the description for my video tutorial on how to do this. This is GTA 5 working on an M1 MacBook Air so it's pretty much the cheapest Mac that you can buy of the Apple Silicon variety and it manages to run at about 50 to 60 frames per second at 1080p so the performance is going to be way better than running through something like Parallels so make sure to check this out. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Anyway thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.